basketball season, but a title will be decided tonight in the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic Championship game, Maryland and Michigan State. The Spartans advancing last night with a two-point win over Texas. Drew Neitzel with 2.4 seconds left gets the game-winning score. And Drew Neitzel recognizing no help down the middle, the most experienced guy in this coaches versus cancer field. And Michigan State wins it by two, advancing to tonight's title game. With Len Elmore, I'm Dave Pash. Heather Cox is here as well. Let's talk about Maryland and what the Terps did last night. They blew out St. John's, led by 37 at the half, and Akene Abekwe at 22 first half points. Well, Akene Abekwe epitomizes the senior urgency for Maryland. 22 points, as you mentioned, and he did it, obviously, utilizing his athleticism. 14 rebounds as well, but the thing I think that really cemented his presence was his ability to block shots and totally intimidate St. John. With the other two seniors, Jones and Strawberry, he makes Maryland a very formidable force. And speaking of Strawberry, he is featured in our 2K Sports Star Watch along with True Knights of Michigan State. Well, DJ Strawberry, Maryland's leading scorer and leading senior as far as urgency is concerned. Tremendous athlete. And Drew Knightsel, as I mentioned, most experienced tournament-tested guy in this field. He's the go-to guy in crunch time. Looking at our starting lineups for Michigan State, they have an excellent freshman in Raymar Morgan who had 18 points last night. Sutan Gray, Walton, and Knights are the other starters. Eric Hayes, pretty good freshman in his own right for Maryland, but the key to the Terps, there are three seniors, and head coach Gary Williams told us yesterday the chemistry on this team much better this year than it was last year when Maryland won 19 games for the second straight year and missed the NCAA tournament, and the chemistry excellent last night in their blowout win over St. John's. And again, you'd be amazed how chemistry improves when it's the last time around for the leaders of the team. Three seniors recognizing that, you know, they'd like to get to the tournament one more time after missing two consecutive years. They had gone to the NCAA tournament 11 straight years prior to two years ago. Here's a three-pointer by Jones that's off the mark. And Raymar Morgan with 18 points gets the rebound. Morgan with a terrific game last night, terrific start to his career. First Michigan State freshman ever to score at least 10 points in his first four college games. Here's Neitzel, the only returning full-time starter for Michigan State from last year's team that won 22 games, tied for sixth in the Big Ten, lost to George Mason in the opening round of the NCAA tournament. Sutton off the dribble, way off the mark. And Gist controls for Maryland. Out to Strawberry. And the son of Daryl Strawberry with a beautiful athletic move for the game's first two. And Michigan State has to be very wary of allowing Maryland up and down in transition because of the athleticism that we just saw right there. Morgan on the drive. Punched out of there by a Beckway. Numbers for Maryland. Gist back to Jones and a Maryland turnover. Again, DJ Strawberry, a tremendous athlete. Look at the crossover. Neitzel gambles for the steal. Strawberry having none of it. And again, just on a dime, the spin. And then the elevation. And again, in open floor type of basketball. Maryland so dangerous. Looks for Michigan State to at least try to control tempo. Morgan, nice finish. The pass from Walton to Michigan State is on the board. And that's what St. John's did not do yesterday. Attack that pressure. Gist attacking Sutton and puts it home off the window. Gist had a double-double last night. 12 points, 10 boards, and also had five blocks. Michigan State breaking pressure. Morgan to Gray for the stop. And that's what I'm talking about. You got to push it. You get it ahead of that first wave of defenders. Now you have an advantage break situation. You got to take advantage. Jones down the lane with a left-hand scoop. No. Pulled down by Sutton and out to Neitzel. Neitzel got it back, fires. Missed the three. Gray gets the rebound, another block for a Beckway. Boy, that goes a long way in deterring guys to thinking that they're going to get easy layups. Calling called on Strawberry. But again, we talk about beating that first wave. Look, now you got three Maryland guys behind the ball, only two back to defend, three on two break. And there, just a nice read by Raymar Morgan, drawing the defender to him. If you don't attack pressure 
and you back off of it, there are more double teams. And again, the length and athleticism of Maryland will ultimately hurt you. Here's Morgan again. Missed the shot. Namick has come off the bench, scores. You know, we saw Kevin Durant, outstanding freshman in the first game, scored 29 for Texas. Not a lot of people talking about Raymar Morgan, but he's looked very good in his first few games as a Spartan. Strawberry, 4-3, and Maryland's up one. As long as Maryland scores, they're going to continue to apply the pressure. However, with Michigan State breaking it pretty reasonably, you know, ultimately Maryland's going to have to back off. But look at that. Look at that anticipation. Seven of the nine Maryland points scored by DJ Strawberry. Dad Darrell in attendance tonight. And it's not just the full court pressure that Maryland applies. And another takeaway. And Strawberry in the open court again lays it home. You talk about operating with confidence. Maryland just flying all over the court, looking to create deflections. Morgan down the lane, nice scoop. And score it for Raymar Morgan. And you give Michigan State credit, not backing down. A couple of turnovers, fine. We're still going to attack. This is a battle of wills right now. Is Maryland going to call off the pressure? Or will Michigan State fold to the pressure? That hit Strawberry last, so it'll be Michigan State ball. Thomas Owen, his 12th season at the helm of Michigan State, lost four starters, including three players to the NBA. And the four Final Fours, the last in 2005. Second most wins behind Judd Heathcote. Tom is a Iron Mountain, Michigan native, and even though he's a Spartan, watched a lot of Michigan football games that I know uh, he's thinking about. Bo Schembechler tonight, the former Michigan head coach, uh, passing away today at the age of 77 as Michigan State turns it over. Strawberry again racing down the floor, and he's fouled. That's the first foul in the game. It's going to go on Maurice Joseph. Well, Daryl Strawberry had some great moments in New York as a Met and Yankee. His son, DJ, with a fine performance at the Garden. Number two, Michigan battles number one, Ohio State. Coverage begins Saturday at 2.30 Eastern. Get ready for college hoops. Reddick dishes it to the perimeter. Gets it, baseline. Reddick fires. It. 2K Sports College Hoops 2K7 features Chant Creator Team Unity Advanced Ball Control The number one College Hoops franchise Four years running Coming soon for Xbox 360, Xbox and Playstation 2 Rated E Bring it Yes! Woo! <laughs> oh, what was that, like five games in a row? Huh? Don't get me wrong, you played great, hon, but your face was like, oh, 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 it was classic. It's classic. Like when things are real easy? Juice box? Huh? You're going to love what we've done to retirement planning. It's called My Plan from Fidelity. Retirement planning made easy. Smart move. The 2K Sports College Hoops Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer, is brought to you by 2K Sports, creators of College Hoops 2K7, the number one rated college basketball video game four years running. And in part by eBay. Whatever it is, you can get it on eBay. Tonight's game is being broadcast on ESPN2 HD, presented by Olivia. Back at the Garden, a city in which Daryl Strawberry once reigned. His son, DJ Strawberry, getting it done for the Terps tonight, who have a three-point lead. Strawberry with nine of the 11 Maryland total. And you can't make a better opening statement than DJ Strawberry. Leads Maryland in scoring, and as you mentioned, dominating today. 51% from the field came into this game shooting that high, but more importantly, came into this game with 14 steals. You can chalk up another one. In five games now, he's got 15 steals, three steals a game. That pressure really takes its toll, and DJ Strawberry right at the point of that pressure. Averaging 17 points per game coming into today as you look at his father, Darrell. Last year, Strawberry averaged 10 points per game, but really improved his outside shooting. Shot 36% from three, and remember, most of that last year was as a point guard. He's been moved to the wing this year where he's a lot more comfortable. 
Strawberry at the line, shooting two. Let's check in with Heather Cox, the third member of our broadcast team. Well, Dave, I talked to Michigan State's Tom Izzo right before the tip. He said he had concerns because his young team felt like they won the Super Bowl last night. He was worried how they'd bounce back, so they talked about focusing on the keys to the game, things like keeping the ball off the block, an emphasis on the boards, and handling Maryland's pressure. He didn't talk about stopping D.J. Strawberry in pregame, but he most certainly did during that last timeout, guys. Well, I'll tell you what, Heather, the other thing he's got to worry about when they do break pressure, the big guys have to be willing to go to the basket strong. Sutan right there makes a nice move. Namik a couple of possessions ago made too many passes. With his size, he should be taking the ball and ripping the rim down. Here's Gist in the lane, blocked by Sutan. And Maurice Joseph gets to the loose ball. That's one way to keep Maryland from pressing you, keep him from scoring. They always... Well, when they press, they press after a score. There you go, rip it down. It went in. <laughs> Gist may have partially blocked it. And Namick gets credited with the basket, and we're tied at 12. All of Michigan State's points have come in the paint. Most yeah. of Maryland's points have, have come in transition. Right, and, and Michigan State recognizing that that's how you take the press and get it called off by continuing to beat it in the heart of the Maryland defense. Aggressively attack the pressure and get layups. And Gary Williams going to go to seven foot one Will Bowers off the bench of the next dead ball. And now the tallest man on the floor is Gist at six feet eight. And Beckway is about six eight, six nine. Joseph off the window. Here's a guy who scored 16 points all year. In four games this year, he's averaging 12 points per game. And that was a very smooth move, very much under control. Six straight points for Michigan State, not anymore. Guest with the throwdown for Maryland. And speaking of smooth, how about Eric Hayes using the high screen to get into the paint, draw that back line of defense, and then find the open man. Hayes, a freshman in the Steve Blake mode, three point guard, pass first. Knight's three. And a Beckway stepped on the baseline. Gary Williams really likes his freshman guards, uh, Eric Hayes and Gravis Vasquez. And look, there's the high screen, rubs Neitzel off, and then really has Sutan just kind of confused as to who to guard. But we weren't sure if we were going to be able to top our first game tonight as Sutan has fouled. A close game between St. John's and Texas with the Longhorns winning. But uh, we might, the way uh, this thing has started. Foul on Will Bowers is his first, and the second on Maryland. Uh, Gary Williams in his 18th year at Maryland, recently agreed to a two-year contract extension through 2011. It could actually extend all the way to 2014. He is number three all-time in the ACC and wins behind Dean Smith and Coach K. Well, you look at the coaching matchup here, two tough-minded, two tenacious, defensive-minded coaches you know, who love to push their kids to reach their potential. And, uh, you know, they're both a joy to talk to. You know, Tom Izzo on the outside looks like the more affable one, but with Gary Williams, you got to get a little bit closer to see what a great guy he is. You can't do it from afar. Now, it's interesting, both of these head coaches have lost a lot of assistant coaches in the last few years. Five current head coaches in college basketball were Tom Izzo assistants. And since the 2002 championship, seven Maryland assistants have left, four to become head coaches. Keith Booth is the veteran on that staff right now for Maryland, and he's in his third year. We've got Michael Adams, an assistant in the second year. Chuck Grizzell left his son in his first year as Vasquez scores to give Maryland a one-point lead. Now, a lot of people would say it's not good defense being played, but I think it's even better offensive execution. Guys utilizing the screens properly, rubbing people off, passes being made when they need to be made. Here's Raymar Morgan to Neitzel. Entry pass, Sutan. A Beckway already with two blocks, make it three. Jones, great job to get to the loose ball. Vasquez to a Beckway! That's pretty basketball right there. Once again, execution, three-on-one break. Ball didn't touch the ground once it got in the front court. Maryland could be an awfully fun team to watch this year, with the exception of uh, those other teams in the ACC that have to play against them. Joseph missing, Bowers with a rebound. You recall last year, Florida was unranked in this tournament. 
and ended up winning the national championship after winning this tournament. Not putting Maryland on par with the Gators, but perhaps an underrated Terrapin team coming into this year as Abekwe is fouled by Sutan. That's the first foul in Michigan State. Look at the block right there. Mike Jones just wanted that ball more. Nice job again. Ball movement, drawing defenders, finding the open man, unselfish basketball. You look at the success of Maryland in transition. Strawberry with a lot of those points. He's got 10 points in the contest, has not missed from the field, one out of two at the line. Maryland by three, 12 and a half to go in the opening half. You sit here and you study Gravis Vasquez and his judgment for the most part, recognizing when to pull back, when to push. It's uncanny for a freshman, and we've seen some pretty good freshmen out here. And a jump ball is called as Walton and Strawberry got tied up. It will go to Michigan State on the alternate possession as Vasquez uh, essentially turned it over for Maryland. Last night, Vasquez only three points, but had eight assists in 20 minutes. You know, another guy that knows how to distribute the ball, knows how to make people better. Only two turnovers for Vasquez last night. But look at the pressure of DJ Strawberry applying to Travis Walton. Walton couldn't wait to give the ball back. Yidong Ebok, double zero, has come into the game. Morgan underneath, great position, and he slaps it off the window. Tell you what, you've got to be so impressed with Raymar Morgan. Again, be able to take you outside, this time on a post off, post up down on the block. Not intimidated. And a foul on Knights allowed high. That's his first, third on Michigan State. Well, we mentioned earlier that Tom Izzo, an Iron Mountain, Michigan native, will tell you more about his thoughts on the death of Michigan head football coach, ex coach Bo Schembechler. Get ready for college hoops. Reddick dishes it to the perimeter. Gets it, baseline. Reddick fires. Buries it. 2K Sports College Hoops 2K7 features. Chan Creator. Team Unity. Advanced Ball Control. The number one college hoops franchise four years running. Coming soon for Xbox 360, Xbox, and PlayStation 2. Rated E for everyone. Here you go, one Brooklyn style pizza. All right. What's a Brooklyn style pizza? What's a Brooklyn style pizza? What are you nuts? You tell him, ma. It's good pizza, boss. Brooklyn style pepperoni. Big slice, big toppings. You gotta fold it like this. You call that a fold? Come on, fold it like a man. I am folding That's like ridiculous. a man. Get our new Brooklyn style pizza with your choice of extra large sausage or pepperoni for just $9.99. Get the door. It's Domino's Brooklyn style pizza. Between my two phone bills, it's probably about $60 a month. About $150. Probably $100 bucks a month. With Vonage, you get unlimited calls to anywhere in the U.S. and Canada, and all the cool features you could ever want are included. And it's just $24.99 a month. Call 1-800-939-4VON. Plus, get one month free. Vonage, leading the Internet phone revolution. Back at the Garden, Maryland leading Michigan State by one, the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic title game. Tomorrow on ABC, coverage starting at 2.30 Eastern, number one and number two in college football, Ohio State hosting Michigan. And tomorrow night at 8 Eastern on ABC, Cal and USC, another game with national title implications. A couple of great games on ABC tomorrow. And as we mentioned before the break, Tom Izzo, a Michigan native, obviously impacted by the death of former Michigan coach Bo Schembechler, and Heather Cox has more on that. Right, everybody in the sporting world deeply affected, but Tom Izzo told me before the game that he grew up in Michigan idolizing the coach, and that he was always more than a football coach, he was an icon. The first, the two didn't meet until Coach Izzo took the job at Michigan State and said even though it was his rival school, he was in awe of Coach Schembechler and really very nervous the first time they met. They then went on to do a bunch of TV spots 
spots together. And he then added to me, it's a huge loss to everyone. We lost someone special, but it's an even more important loss to the Michigan Wolverine family. And then he added, with a bit of a wink, that says a lot about Bo coming from a Spartan. Mm. And obviously, uh, Heather, everybody wants to see how Michigan will respond tomorrow uh, to the death of Bo Schembechler. It might be harder for the coaches. Lloyd Carr, he talked about you know, looking up to Bo Schembechler. That was uh, his mentor. And you know, the players didn't know Bo, obviously, as well as the coaches. We'll see how they respond against Ohio State tomorrow as Maryland turns it over. One of the reasons for the turnover, Michigan State goes zone. Maryland having some difficulty. Knocked out of bounds by Maryland. It'll stay Michigan State ball. Eighteen seventeen, Maryland leading. And as we look at our game track, 30 of the 35 points scored have come from the paint. Only two points have come at the free throw line. And again, it comes about by transition. Maryland with steals, off of turnovers, getting into the open floor. And also, for Michigan State particularly, it comes down to execution. Their intention is to break down Maryland's pressure and to be able to get the ball inside. With the exception of that one free throw, all of Michigan State's points have come inside the lane. Shot clock at 8. Neitzel. Cross-court feed to Walton. One on the timer. Did he get it off? Yes, he did. Offensive rebound, and the putback no good for Gray. Another chance for Gray, too strong, cleared by DJ Strawberry. Good rebounding. Guys have to look at the basket, though. Gray went up a couple of times, never really saw the move. Play getting sloppy here in the last few minutes. Strawberry turning it over. Missed three on the other end by Joseph. Maryland basketball. James Gist, 6'8", junior, making his presence felt down low. Good shot blocker, good rebounder, good accessory guy. Penetration, you get the ball in his hands, he'll finish for you. He had a double-double last night, Gist did. 12 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 blocks. 3-pointer, no good by Jones. He had 4 triples last night. Vasquez gets to the loose ball at center court. Gary Williams not really happy with that shot because it came off of one or two passes. Jones need to move the ball a little bit, let him move and flow into the shot. Here's Gist, the man you just talked about. Nice move along the baseline, getting himself some space. And a nifty finish. Six points now for Gist. Okay, nice job on the low block. Maryland's got a couple of guys who can finish very nicely. And that helps them with their perimeter game. Nice inside-out combination. Here's Neitzel with the game-winning shot against Texas last night with 2.4 seconds left. And an illegal screen called on Michigan State. Offensive foul on Ebok. That's his first fourth team foul on Michigan State. Take a look at Gist right there. First of all, look at his legs. Look how strong those calves are. Allows him to have the stability down low to be able to take the bumps, get head and shoulders past his man, and go to the basket. Maryland by three. Eric Hayes, another freshman, will run the point now for the Terrapins. And Michigan State get called for another foul. That's the fifth team foul. This on Ray Moore, uh, Raymar Morgan is first. Only well, one team foul on Maryland so far. Maryland really doing a nice job of attacking their front line right now. Michigan State continually looking to get the ball inside. Except for that errant shot by Mike Jones a couple of possessions ago. That has been the focus of the Terrapins. Michigan State back in that zone. Kind of 2-1-2, two, 2-3. Two, two, Vasquez out to Jones. Short with a three. Bowers the rebound. And Maryland gets called for a foul. And I'm going to tell you something. Jones has taken probably far too many shots behind the white line instead of the blue line. The white line is the pro line, and that's a clear three and a half, four feet difference between the college line and the pro line. And Mike Jones is set up behind that white line much too often. That's too easy a shot, and Michigan State's going to say, yo, take it. You can have all you want. And Jones has yet to hit a shot tonight. He's 0 for 4 from the floor. And 18 points last night in a 32-point blowout of St. John's. They're up 37 at halftime in that game. 
Joseph tried to make the extra pass. Good defense by Hayes, and then Maryland turns it right back over. Boy, the last five minutes been really sloppy by both teams. Joseph's pass would have been nice if it was a bounce pass. Sutton, they're going to call traveling. Boy, I don't know how that's not a foul on Maryland. Sutton got clobbered, but they call traveling before the foul. Well, again, Sutton recognizing the shot blockers from Maryland. He traveled. No yeah, question. no, he did. Yep, right call. But it's the shot blockers and understanding that guys can send it back on you that forces the hesitation. You're a big guy. You get the ball inside around the rim. It's about a ball fake and then explode up to the basket. You can't be timid about it. You're not going to get the call. Guest traveled, trying to set up for a jump shot. Why do you think both these teams are struggling here offensively the last five minutes? Well, I think it's guys getting a little selfish now. That shot by Gist, yeah, he made the play down on the low block. He's probably feeling it and wanted to get something up then. That was not the spot that he should be at least focused on. He should be turning and facing, locating the defense instead of trying to get a shot off and take what they give you. And on the other end, as I said, the Maryland shot blocking prowess has forced the big guys from Michigan State to think twice about going up when, in effect, it should be ball fake and explode. Three and a half minutes without a field goal for Michigan State. Down three now. Here's Walton, guarded by Strawberry. Timer at 10. Walton left alone. Too strong with the three. Sutton couldn't get the rebound. Strawberry with it for Maryland. Sutton needs stronger hands, but Knightsville not in the ball game right now, and it seems as though the Michigan State offense very inconsistent. You've got a lot of inexperience on the floor right now for Michigan State. And the Spartans keep it close with Knights along the bench. He was really the key last night for them in their victory against Texas, as we mentioned, the game-winning shot as Gist turns it over. Maryland by three over Michigan State, 7.22 to go in the first half of this championship game at the Garden. If you stink, it wouldn't matter if you were the last guy on earth. New Red Zone King. It's casual day, so hopefully you're taking full advantage. It's also the fifth day of a seven-day week. Seven plus five equals 12, which of course is the retired number of Jim Kelly and Joe Namath. It also happens to be Heinz Ward's favorite movie. And if that's not enough, there's only three days till Tiki faces a potent Jacksonville D. Three days till the Giants square off with the Jaguars at 8.30. T-G-I-A-M, people. Thank God it's almost Monday. My favorite NBA League pass moment. Oh, wow. Hmm. I mean, so many. Of course, Kobe's 81. Kobe goes straight to the dribble in the lane. I'm watching the game live online. Through NBA League pass broadband. History tonight at Staples. Now I'm thinking he's going for 100. Kobe's Watching HD is like sitting on the bench. Felt like I was there. Get NBA League Pass from DirecTV for just $199. To order, call 1-800-GET-SPORTS or visit directtv.com. You want to score big? Get the NBA League Pass from DirecTV. This is what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. Hard left hand. Straight on the button by Pacquiao. Now their third explosive fight. Talk about going into the jaws of the lion. Three times the fury. They're trading their money punches. Three times the pride. Oh my goodness, this is boxing at its best. What a fight! Takia Morales 3, Saturday, November 18th. Live on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. Don't miss it live on DirecTV Pay-Per-View, Channel 122. Welcome back to New York City. Never too early for Christmas lights, especially here in New York City. Mid-November college basketball at the Garden, the title game of the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic. Maryland by three over Michigan State. And recently, Tom Izzo and Gary Williams took a trip they'll never forget. With more on that story, here's Heather Cox. And May, the two join nine other coaches for a trip to Kuwait for Operation Hardwood, designed to burst the morale of the U.S. troops. They played in a 12-team tournament that the soldiers took very seriously. They called it May madness. Now, Coach Williams said it had a profound effect on him. He was stunned by the soldiers' appreciation and had to remind them that they had it backward. The coaches were there to thank them. And it was Coach Tom Izzo's second tour. And he said that the experiences he wouldn't trade for a million bucks certainly puts games into perspective, guys. It really does. ESPN's Jay Billis over there as well with those coaches. And, you know, to a man, every memory that they have from it 
obviously is something that they share. It was a camaraderie among the coaches also that they continue to speak about. A nice bonding mechanism for some of the greatest college coaches in the game today. Morgan tried to hit Sutton. Out of bounds off Michigan State. Seven turnovers for Michigan State. Eight field goals. Nine turnovers for Maryland. Nine field goals for the Terps. Three-point lead for Maryland in the title game of the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic. Benefiting coaches versus cancer. Maryland blew out St. John's last night. Michigan State escaped Texas by two. Longhorns won the third place game earlier tonight. Kevin Durant, the outstanding freshman, at 29 points in that game. Maryland lost into the backcourt, but it was touched by Michigan State, so no over and back call. Eight seconds on the shot clock. And another turnover by Maryland. That's 10. Neither team of the point in almost three minutes. And again, pretty good defense. We talked about some of the poor execution on both ends offensively, but in that sequence, it was about hustle. It was about deflections. State really engaged right now. And this is a game where Michigan State has not been intimidated. Brown with the three. So Michigan State touched it last. Maryland kept possession. And Parrish Brown hits a three. Maryland up six. You know, with the Maryland pressure and Knights a few moments ago on the bench, you were wondering if this game is going to ultimately wear him down. Tom Izzo taking an opportunity to give Knights a little bit of rest, knowing that continually down the stretch, he's going to be asked to be the guy that's ultimately going to break the press. And it's not just physical fatigue that the press wears on you. It's also mental fatigue on a consistent basis, trying to pick out the open guys and continually pushing yourself to go beyond the fatigue. Ebekwe commits the foul his first and a third on Maryland. Michigan State just one out of its last ten after a pretty hot start. Here's freshman Raymar Morgan taking it all the way to the goal and putting it home. He did a nice job. Once he got in deep, he froze for a second and was able to freeze Ebekwe, the shot blocker. Eight points for Morgan. Had 18 last night. Knights along the floor. And a foul is called on Strawberry for Maryland. That's the 14th foul, first personal on DJ. And Raymar Morgan, that's what I mean by a nice job of execution. A gamble by Strawberry hurt, but it was just that little bit of hesitation that got a Beckway off balance. A Beckway, normally a guy who's going to protect the goal, never left his feet. Raymar Morgan went to McKinley High School in Canton, Ohio. That's the same high school that produced former Michigan State standoff. NBA point guard Eric Snow. Morgan won back-to-back -back titles at that high school. First time that happened in 30 years, back-to-back -back state titles. As Neitzel hits the shot to pull Michigan State within two. First basket tonight for Drew Neitzel, who had 15 points last night. But his value up until now has been running that offense, even though Travis Walton is the point guard. It's Neitzel that I expect to make plays. And a foul on Michigan State. Let's check in with Heather for more on Raymar Morgan. Well, Raymar had a shoulder sprain, so he missed the first exhibition game. You can see the padding that he's wearing for protection. But because he missed that game, Coach Izzo actually invited the freshman to sit next to him during the game to get the coach's perspective. Then, this is unheard of, he asked Raymar to address the team as the coach would in the locker room following the game. Really just shows you the amount of respect that Tom Izzo has for his group of freshmen, especially Raymar Morgan. Morgan, the first Michigan State freshman ever to score in double figures in his first four games. He was only the second Michigan State player to do it in his first three games. Sam Vincent, the other. And think of all the great players at Michigan State over the years. But Morgan, the first freshman to accomplish that feat. A one and one situation now for a Beckway after Sutton committed the foul, 17 foul on the Spartans. Well, it's something to be said for Tom Izzo as well. You know, they say leaders don't develop followers they develop other leaders and that's essentially what he's doing with Raymar Morgan recognizing he's got a special talent and everybody talking about Greg Oden not only the best freshman of the Big Ten maybe in the country but radar Morgan under Raymar Morgan under the radar screen not only the Big Ten but the country in terms of uh, some of the best freshmen such a touted freshman class Ty Lawson North Carolina, Chase Budinger in Arizona. We saw Kevin Durant of Texas earlier tonight. Brown looking for another three. Hits the high archer. And Maryland up five. And you look 
at Drew Knights or look over to the bench and say, you know what? That wasn't in the scouting report. Paris Brown not known to be that kind of a three-point shooter. He only hit two threes all season coming into Madison Square Garden. He's got two already in this hat. Yeah, I was very impressed right there with Morgan in the middle, double team, very strong with the ball. Did not want to give up possession, and that's what you have to do against this pressure. Strong hands, be strong with the ball. Entry pass to Namick, backing in on a Beckway. Another block! Fourth of the game for a Beckway. Michigan State keeps possession. One on the shot clock. And Neitzel is fouled by Hayes with one on the timer. We've been saying it all evening. In the first game, St. John's, Texas, you see the roller coaster ride you take with freshmen. And here, Drew Neitzel. First of all, name it too predictable right now. Same move every time a Beckway's got it down. And then when Neitzel has the ball, knowing the shot clock's going down, starts to create for himself. And with one second left, Eric Hayes, the freshman, just doesn't realize and then creates a foul. Bails Neitzel out. First foul on Hayes and the fifth on Maryland. And Heather told you that a Beckway applied for the NBA draft, then withdrew. Leading returning score from Maryland a year ago. And he's six feet nine, but he can block shots. And he has a wingspan that out there he plays like a 6'11 guy. Well, it's all about winning here. He can win with Maryland and get to the tournament, establish his stamp. He'll get another chance. Obviously wasn't getting enough uh, positive feedback from scouts, and that's why he decided to go back to Maryland, as that was touched last by Michigan State. A Beckway. Couldn't finish off the inbound pass. And another Maryland foul. That's 16 fouls. And Hayes commits a second personal. So we had a fast start by both teams. The offense has slowed down a little bit, but not Parrish Brown. Two triples for Maryland, which it leads by three. So what's it like with a new addition to the family? I was nervous during the delivery, but now I finally know my purpose in life. Watching college football. Watch college football Saturday afternoons on ABC. Presented by Best Buy. College football lives here. Get ready for college hoops. Reddick dishes it to the perimeter. Gets it. Baseline. Reddick fires. Buries it. 2K Sports College Hoops 2K7 features. Chant Creator. Team Unity. Advanced Ball Control, the number one college hoops franchise four years running. Coming soon for Xbox 360, Xbox, and PlayStation 2. Rated E for everyone. Beneath the placid exterior lies a cauldron of activity inside the Wendy's new jalapeno cheddar double melt. Shown here, we see its many layers, each serving an important function. Fresh ground beef patties insulate the center, keeping it warm. A slice of pepper jack melts beneath bacon, and deep at the burger's core, jalapenos explode in a river of molten cheese. Man can only stand in awe of this miraculous way to do what tastes right. This hurts more than shopping for auto insurance. Suck it up, champ. Insurance takes the pain out of it. But I need collision coverage now. With some of the fastest quotes on the web, eSurance makes it easy to save on auto insurance. That's why thousands of drivers switch to eSurance every week. eSurance has got you covered in every season. Quote by... Touchdown! If you're on the go, you've got to have eSurance. Get your fast, free auto insurance quote. Visit eSurance.com today. Scott Reese in our college basketball studios. Coming up on the Halftime Report, we'll have reaction from the sports world to the death of longtime Michigan football coach Bo Schembeck. Also, Shaquille O'Neal on the shelf. We will tell you why and for how long. Plus, college basketball is Bobby Knight's crew uh, in some trouble against North Dakota State. We'll show you how that shook down in Lubbock. And speaking of Bobby Knight, his former team with a squeaker over Indiana State, 73-66. The Hoosiers are victorious. Illinois, no problem with Georgia Southern, 78-44. Steve Lavin joins me at halftime. For now, back to Madison Square Garden. Dick. So Indiana and Illinois with uh, victories. Are Illinois close to a victory over Georgia Southern? Michigan State hoping to do it for the Big Ten as well against Maryland. Feast Week presented by Lowe's underway Monday and the EA Sports Maui Invitational at 9 Eastern. DePaul takes on number 22 Kentucky. 
Number six, UCLA at 11 Eastern will face Chaminade. Can the Bruins get back to the Final Four? Well, I tell you what, they've still got some pieces, even though Jordan Farmar left for the NBA. Aaron Aflalo, uh, Umba Mute, Josh Shipp back from a hip injury, but the key is going to be Darren Collison, the guy who's taken over at the point for Jordan Farmar. If Collison can give him that high octane that he did last year in the Final Four year coming off the bench, if he can give it to him for 40 minutes, I think UCLA is a good bet to go deep in the tournament. What's been the key for Michigan State shutting down D.J. Strawberry? No points in the last 12 minutes after 10 in the first four minutes. The key to shutting down Strawberry has been not turning the ball over. Strawberry's gotten his points primarily in transition. And if he's not stealing the ball, getting out in transition, you know, Maryland hasn't really looked to him offensively. Neitzel spins out the three. A Beckway clears. Maryland by three in the championship game of the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic benefiting coaches versus cancer. Texas won the third place game earlier tonight. Kevin Durant scored 29 points, the third highest scoring total in a coaches versus cancer game. And Durant just a freshman. We've seen some pretty good freshmen tonight and some pretty good senior play. As the senior from Corona, California, D.J. Strawberry is fouled. And I think D.J. Strawberry probably saw the graphic and heard us talk about the fact that he hadn't touched the ball in over 12 minutes. And that time, he pretty much forced the issue, but it just demonstrates that ability. Put it on the floor, weave through a crowd, and create something. Second foul on Namick, eighth Michigan State foul. Maryland has committed 16 fouls. Strawberry wore number five his first three years in Maryland, and he changed to wearing jersey number two. This is what he did in high school as a senior. He changed his number and led Mater Day to the state championship in Corona. Edong Ebok back into the game for Michigan State. Namick will go to the bench. Very superstitious. Changing that jersey number. Turnover by Michigan State. Maryland almost gave it away again as Marquise Gray broke up the pass. Here's another terrific freshman from Venezuela, Gravis Vasquez, a 21 in red. You changed your number, though, didn't you? You said you were 41, then you went to 44. I think I had to. <laughs> I think 41 was taken. That hit Neitzel, so it'll stay Maryland basketball. Who had 41 that you had to switch, you remember? Uh, that's a good question. I don't remember. But once I had 44, I don't like changing. The whistle, they're trying to figure out the shot clock, but it did change possession. So it's a new 35 for Maryland. Michigan State did have possession of the ball. Now that I think of it, I kept 44 because I became a starter with the New Jersey Nets that year, and I said, you know what? This feels good. <laughs> and if this was uh, this day and age, someone had to pay you like they do to give you some money to, to give your number up. Shot clock at 11. Pretty good D by Michigan State right now. You don't want to bail him out, though. Vasquez, tough shot for the freshman. Gary Williams loves both Vasquez and Eric Hayes, his two freshman guards. And the reason is because of judgment. I mean, Eric Hayes may have made a mistake in the foul with one second on the shot clock a couple of minutes ago, but made some very deft passes, gotten people involved. And Vasquez just gives you that European flavor, and there's the flop. Neitzel commits the foul. 19 foul on Michigan State. It's about that international ball, and Vasquez did a nice job of baiting Neitzel into it. Normally, a little push like that wouldn't have budged Vasquez, but he gave it the full Monty, if you will, and the officials bought it. Take a look here. First of all, excellent defense right there, and that was just a total, total flop. Hmm. But you know what? Maryland will take it. Second personal and Neitzel, a team control foul, so even though Maryland's in the bonus, uh, no shooting situation. 19 foul on Michigan State. And now an offensive foul called on Maryland. Hmm. <laughs> That's what Gary Williamson says. That's on Osby is first and the seventh on Maryland. Another team control foul, so 
No shooting situation here on the bonus. Just traded possessions. Minute and a half to go in the opening half, Maryland by seven. It seems like this half has uh, taken about an hour and 30 minutes. Turnover, Michigan State. Strawberry with most of his points in transition tonight. Gets another two on the fast break, and Maryland's lead swells to nine. Six straight points for the Terps. Well, again, harassing defense gets you where you want to go and gets Strawberry in transition. Enjoying Guinness Draft in a sports bar is a great idea. Yes, this is much better than the last bar. Yes, this is much better than the last bar. Much better? Brilliant! Brilliant! Please enjoy Guinness Draft responsibly. DJ Strawberry with a lot of points in transition tonight for Maryland. 14 in all for the son of baseball great Daryl Strawberry. And Maryland has opened up a nine-point lead on Michigan State. And as we said all along, he's a tremendous defender. The offensive prowess is probably just over the last couple of years, he's developed confidence in his ability to put the ball in the basket. But there's no mistake in the sticky defense. And with him on Raymar Morgan, Morgan probably the best natural offensive player on this Michigan State team. Maryland looking to shut down a prime source of points for Michigan State. Not scoring this point is 10 nothing in a fast break. Joseph missing. Strawberry out in transition again. Michigan State back on defense and Vasquez will set it up. DJ Strawberry was the MVP of the College Park Regional. And who knows, he could be the MVP here at the Garden. Missed the three that time, and a Beckway gets called for a second personal foul. Eighth team foul on Maryland. Well, so Beckway not happy with himself. Obviously, that was a cheap foul. It's going to get him on the bench for the remainder. Only 48.5 seconds, but... You know, in the end, you got to have a little bit of patience and discretion. Once you're blocked out, keep your hands down to your side or out to the side as opposed to reaching over. One and one situation for Michigan State, so Marquise Gray will go to the line. Missed the last five games last season with a broken foot. He rebroke it in June. It's a key guy in the front court, though, for Tom Izzo. If Michigan State's going to be a factor in the Big Ten, Spartans finished sixth in the league last year with an 8-8 eight and eight conference mark. A great big and strong, good rebounder. Once he learns to finish strong, he's going to be a tough customer. But right now, you're right, he keeps the ball alive. He's kind of the enforcer out there. Need those in the Big Ten. About a 13-second difference between the game and shot clocks. That's kind of funny, Paris Brown Posting up on Raymar Morgan. Morgan 6'7. Brown barely six feet. Shot clock at seven. Gist tried to feed Osby in the lane and an offensive foul on Osby. Second time he's committed an offensive foul. Well, he was called for backing into the defensive player and wrapping his arms behind him to try to hold position. But look at Osby's shoulders. Look at that body. You don't have to do anything but make contact. I know I'd fall down. <laughs> Osby started his collegiate career at New Mexico, then went to junior college and transferred to Maryland. 19.2 on the clock here in the half. And we're going to have a timeout. Well, this is a big basket for Michigan State. Obviously, if they can hold on to the last shot, connect. They go in their locker room feeling a lot better about themselves. You know, the critical thing is not to turn the ball over. You know Maryland is going to go after them. And who knows, turnovers may play a key role in tomorrow's main college football game. They usually do in football games. Ohio State and Michigan will meet one versus two at 2.30 Eastern. Coverage begins on ABC. And don't forget tomorrow night, another good one on ABC. Cal and USC at 8 Eastern. And obviously everybody wondering how will the death of Bo Schembechler today at the age of 77, the Michigan legend, how will that impact 
Lloyd Carr, the head coach of Michigan. Shem Beckler was his mentor. How does that impact him, the other coaches, the players tomorrow as they meet Ohio State? Maryland with the lead of seven with 19.2 on the clock. Michigan State's ball and full court pressure by the Terrapins. 24 combined turnovers and we had a great start. First to five, six minutes of this game as that was last touched by Maryland. But since then, it's gotten really sloppy. Well, the defensive pressure is heated up. The officials have allowed guys to play, so there are going to be some bumps and they have an impact on your ball handling. And then a little bit of impatience. Nine seconds to go in the half. Here's Sutan. Neitzel. Nice fake. The extra pass to Walton. Can't hit the three. No basket. Ebot missed it anyway, but didn't get it off until the buzzer sound. DJ Strawberry averaging 17 points per game on the year, had 19 last night, 14 in the first half tonight, and Maryland leads by seven at halftime. Strawberry with the spin, Strawberry in transition, and Maryland one half away from a championship of the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic. To Scott and Steve in the studio. All right, Dave, thanks so much. So uh, Tom Izzo, Steve, the recipient of a uh, very much unwanted strawberry Sunday in that first half of play. Really kind of a sloppy 20 minutes. What did you take away from it? Well, it's really a battle of tempos. And if you're Tom Izzo, you're happy with the tempo. You want to keep the game in the 60s, the low 70s. Give your team a chance late to throw a knockout punch and get a win. And Michigan State's done a nice job in every area except turnovers. And that's allowed Maryland to get out 10 zero in fast break points Maryland with the edge in that part of the game so interesting to see here in the second half Michigan State's got to get somebody into the flow uh, whether it's uh, Raymar Morgan uh, or it's uh, Drew Neitzel uh, or Goran Sutan may have to step up and make some shots he was quiet last night he's quiet again tonight and we'll see what kind of adjustments coach Izzo makes at the half you can bet there will be some first game in this uh, tournament Madison Square Garden earlier Texas and St. John's Kevin Durant trying to steal the show how about 29 points, 10 rebounds? A spectacular freshman. He's got the triple threat from long range, off the bounce, at the rim. Tight game here with 10 to play, and Ricky Torres hit three big triples. That caps a 10-0 run, ties the game at 60. Other end, off the steal, DJ Augustine in transition. He had 17. Very impressive in the garden. And St. John's now with a chance to win it. In regulation, it's 77-76, looking for the final shot. Anthony Mason, Jr., they settle for the three, Steve. Yeah, not the shot they wanted, did not appear organized, and as a result, Daryl Hill did not get the ball in his hands in a critical situation, cost him a game. Well, the sports world mourning the loss of one of the all-time greats in college football. Reaction to the death of Bo Schembechler when the halftime report rolls up. The 2K Sports College Hoops Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer. Brought to you by the new LS, unprecedented, allnewls.com. I've never even seen this thing before. Did you see how fast I did that? Like when things are real easy? I'm like the king of that thing. You're gonna love what we've done to retirement planning. It's called My Plan from Fidelity. Retirement planning made easy. Smart move. Hey, you wanna see something cool? Now you can hang out with an NFL quarterback. Hey, I'm coming to your house. Fathead is a larger than life limited edition wall graphic that brings all the NFL action right into your home or office. Fathead is huge. That's how big a fathead is. 
Just peel and place. Fathead is easy to put up and can be moved over and over. Coolest thing is, put it on the wall. You don't like it there? Peel it off, put it on another wall. Too big and real for stores? Fathead.com where you can also find all your favorite players and teams. Officially licensed by the Collegiate Licensing Company, NASCAR, the NBA, the NFL, and Players Inc. Fathead is the coolest thing out right now. Call, get a fat, fat head. Fathead are for true NFL fans only. Take those posters off the wall, kick them out, and put a fat head. Fathead, go big, real big. You call me a fathead? Hello, people in TV land, get a fathead. It is only fitting that Bo Schembechler's final breaths were spent discussing his favorite topic, Michigan football. The longtime great Wolverine coach died this morning after taping a television show on the eve of Michigan's showdown with Ohio State. Schembechler had been battling diabetes and heart disease and ultimately, his body simply gave in. Ironically, he and I were going to see each other yesterday, uh, but he wanted to address the team. That was extremely important to him. And so he lived his life. He fought his heart disease and diabetes with incredible valor. And um, we couldn't do anything more. I find it difficult to express what Bo has meant to this program for close to 40 years. He was a giant of a coach and a giant of a man. Bo had an unmistakable twinkle in his eye and I will miss that spirit so much and so much more. I am grateful for this remarkable man and his contributions that have made Michigan so special. So I believe somehow that Bo sensed that his time might be coming, but at the same time, he wanted to live every day to the full. He wanted to be around Michigan football this week. That was very important to him. And um, we just hope again that the Michigan team can, can come up and win one for Paul. Plenty of reaction from the college football community. Current Michigan head coach Lloyd Carr saying, quote, We have lost a giant at Michigan and in college football. There was never a greater ambassador for the University of Michigan or college football than Bo. Personally, I have lost a man I love. Ohio State head coach Jim Tressel saying this is an extraordinary loss for college football. Bo Schembechler touched the lives of many people and made the game of football better in every way. He will always be both a Buckeye and a Wolverine, and our thoughts are with all who grieve his loss. We look at the numbers on Bo Schembechler, and they are impressive. 21 years as Michigan head coach, 194, 48, and 5. That include winning or sharing 13 conference titles along the way. Michigan also appeared in 10 Rose Bowls under Schembechler. Now, the Wolverine players gathered for a moment of remembrance this afternoon at the 50-yard line of a totally empty Ohio Stadium. Both Michigan and Ohio State will observe a moment of silence for Shem Beckler before the start of Saturday's game. And it is a big game. Number one versus number two, Ohio State and Michigan. Follow that up with Cal and USC at 8 o'clock Eastern time. It's ESPN on ABC College Football Saturday. Meanwhile, the other Buckeye team in action tonight, and the Ohio State Hoopsters acquitted themselves quite well. We will show you what their young guns did, and Shaquille O'Neal won't be doing his thing for quite some time. We will tell you why. Get ready for college hoops. Reddick dishes it to the perimeter. Gets it, baseline. Reddick fires. 2K Sports College Hoops 2K7 features Chant Creator Team Unity Advanced Ball Control The number one College Hoops franchise four years running Coming soon for Xbox 360, Xbox and PlayStation 2 Rated E for everyone Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen Step right up, welcome to our show It's sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a caustic chemical found in hair removal products. But you know what? It's also found in something else. Yeah, that can't be 
good for you. 78 people are dead in the worst disaster in football history. I think you should have this back. Chris gave it to you. <laughs> when I heard about what had happened, the only thing I could think about was maybe I can help. Putting the team back on that field might be disrespectful. This is not a game. This is about what happened to this town. You think you're the only one that's had it rough? This is your opportunity to rise from these ashes. And if you do that, we cannot lose. We are Marshall. What day is it, son? We did PG. Even with all its new features for 2007, the most important parts of a Volvo XC90 are the parts we don't make. Lease a new 2007 Volvo XC90 3.2 front wheel drive for $359 a month for 24 months. Eastern Kentucky and Ohio State. Of course, Greg Oden still not in uniform for the Buckeyes, but freshman Daquan Cook, Steve, very much a factor. Well, seeing his ability there to slash to the basket, also mid-range pull-up, can shoot from long range. He's got the complete package. Great rotation there. Pronation in the wrist as well. For a freshman, unusual poise. This Buckeye team has young talent, but they are playing with great composure. Pronation in the wrist. 16 for Cook, 13 for Mike Conley. Big win for Ohio State, Steve. Now, this team certainly unproven with all these young guns, but what is the upside for this Buckeye club? Well, I think when you consider Greg Oden isn't even with the team yet, and they already are hit on all cylinders. Thad Mata has so many weapons at his disposal. He goes 9-10 deep, tremendous quickness, interchangeable parts. And when you bring a player like Greg Oden back with his ability to dominate, control the paint at both ends of the floor, the Buckeyes are clearly going to be the favorite to win the Big Ten, and they'll have a chance, even though they're very young, if they develop and improve over a period of time to win a national championship. And that's high expectations. Expectations uh, <laughs> yeah. in Columbus. Football team is used to that, a little more unusual for basketball. Now well, they're thinking, hey, Carmelo Anthony did it in one year for Syracuse. Maybe Greg Oden leads this young Ohio State team. Wisconsin going to be a factor in the conference as well. Elsewhere in the Big Ten, Indiana taking on cross state rival Indiana State. DJ White going to be a big factor for this team. Oh, potential player of the year candidate, Kelvin Sampson. Glad to have him in his rookie campaign as the coach of the Hoosiers. But the Sycamores kept this one close here with the tight defense. Gabriel Moore, spin move. Well, Royce Waltman, an excellent coach of the Sycamores. And remember, they have beaten the Hoosiers going into this game three of the last four times they've faced up. So a little bit of a thorn in the side of the Hoosiers, but tonight the Hoosiers get the W. Close but no cigar. That was Bobby Knight's former team. This Bobby Knight's current team. Texas Tech got all they could handle from North Dakota State. Remember, North Dakota State, the team that knocked off uh, Wisconsin last year, and here Ben Woodside for three, and that puts the Bison up well, within one. Daryl Dora answers, and then in four minutes to go, Benny Valentine, this is a big bucket for Tech, and a sigh of relief from Red Raider Nation. 85-81, it certainly did not come easy. Of course, the general bearing down on that Dean Smith record for victories, and uh, here's a look at the next 10 games, and you see those uh, arrows. Uh, any of those could potentially be the, uh, the magical victory. The worldwide leader will be there. The worldwide leader will certainly be there. You can bet on that. SEC teams in action. LSU, no issues with Nichols State. The big baby, Glenn Davis, the slimmed down baby, 16 points. That organic oatmeal replaced <laughs> the cookies and the pizza. I want no part of that stuff. Ronald Steele, 20 points for Alabama in a win over Middle Tennessee. And Kentucky gets 21 and 5 from Ramel Bradley, 79 56 over Mississippi Valley State. Former LSU star Shaquille O'Neal will undergo knee surgery and expected to be sidelined four to six weeks. Originally, they thought it was a hyperextension. Now they know it's torn cartilage, so the Heat will be without Shaq for the foreseeable future. Baseball, Frank Thomas is headed north, way north, to the Toronto Blue Jays. The Big Hurt finalizes a deal, two years, $18 million. It includes a $10 million option for the 2009 season. Other news and notes, uh, the A's, uh, well, they lose a player, but they get a manager, naming Bobby Guerin new skipper to replace Ken Maka. The Steelers will likely have Troy Polamalu's services for Sunday against Cleveland. Uh, Ray Lewis, however, likely not in action for the Ravens against Atlanta.
DJ Strawberry, 14 points in the first half. He has keyed a potent Maryland attack against Michigan State. Second half tip is imminence. The 2K Sports College Hoops Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer. Brought to you by Volvo. Experience the full line of 2007 Volvos. Who would you give a Volvo to? Volvo for life. Uh -huh. want to change the color of him I and mean, it has legs and I don't know what it is um, and, and, and there's worms and some bugs but his head is so tiny Who would you give a Volvo to? Tell us at volvocars.us Lease a new 2007 Volvo XC90 3.2 front wheel drive for $3.59 a month for 24 months you love our burgers, and that's just the beginning. Introducing our premium age prime sirloin, cut from the best of the best beef. Prime is what a steak lover lives for. Almost too tender for a knife, too juicy for words. And try our new fresh jumbo lump crab cake. All jumbo lump meat, nearly no cake. Uncompromising quality, incredible freshness. Yours always, Ruby Tuesday. Think you can handle Chad Johnson one-on-one? -on -one? I don't think so. Well, now you can bring Chad into your home with Fathead. I'm a fathead? You calling me a fathead? Like Chad, Fathead is big and bold with just a bit of attitude. Just peel and place in any home or office. Now that was cool. Fathead wall graphics are classic collectibles made for true fans only. You're gonna want one of these. Fathead can take a hit too. Printed on strong, durable vinyl, you can move Fathead over and over without damaging walls. Fathead, go big, go real. Too big and real to be available in stores. Fathead.com is where you can also find all your favorite players and teams. Officially licensed for the collegiate licensing company, NASCAR, the NBA, the NFL, and Players Inc. Don't I look good? Visit Fathead.com and let a limited edition Fathead take over your room. Fathead. Hey, I'm a Fathead. <laughs> And Maryland one half away from a championship of the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer, leading Michigan State by seven. With Len Elmore, I'm Dave Pash. Heather Cox is with us as well. 62% shooting for Maryland. Michigan State shoots only 36% and trails by seven. Well, I'll tell you, with Maryland, they lighten it up, but they have the same amount of turnovers as they do field goals. And for Michigan State, 11 turnovers in the first half. Obviously, they haven't really fallen into Maryland's trap and uh, as far as the pressure is concerned you look at the numbers there the reason for the low shooting percentage has a lot to do with Maryland's intimidation around the basket five blocks in the first half they average eight Michigan State with more turnovers than made shots 0 for 7 from 3 our 2k sports a star watch revisiting what we did at the outset of the telecast DJ strawberry with 14 points Knights of 4.0 assists in that first half yeah, Maryland's done a nice job of taking Drew Knights a lot of the ball game. And also, with Raymar Morgan, who leads Michigan State in scoring with eight points, he's got four turnovers, and that has to do with the tight defense being played on by D.J. Strawberry. Maryland will start with the basketball. Shot clock at 15. Strawberry shooting 66% from the floor in the two games here at Madison Square Garden. At 19 and a 32-point win over St. John's last night. Gist with the timer at three. And Maryland's up nine. Nice job of creating by Eric Hayes. Takes it down to the baseline, forces the defense to honor him. And then Gist just steps out for the baby jumper. Who will step up for Michigan State? Last night it was Raymar Morgan. Now it's an offensive foul on Michigan State. Heather Cox talked with both coaches. 
And Tom Izzo was very disappointed that they allowed Maryland to shoot 62%, but he admitted that a lot of those came on easy baskets off of turnovers. He pleaded with the team at halftime to be tougher inside and not to show their youth. He thinks the freshmen have been much too casual. Gary Williams on the other side very pleased with the defensive effort. He felt Maryland's half-court defense was a bit choppy. He'd like to see smoother execution here. And DJ Strawberry right there, Heather got uh, smacked in the face, but it's okay, no foul. And Strawberry traveled. It's going to be interesting for Michigan State, Lynn, you know, as they're having trouble scoring tonight. Last year you had Shannon Brown, you had Maurice Ager, you had Paul Davis, you had a lot of options, but Tom Izzo lost all three of those players to the NBA draft. And who's going to be the guy that steps up tonight? It was Neitzel last night and Morgan. Neitzel hit the game-winning shot to beat Texas with 2.4 on the clock. Well, they're going to need some of their big guys. Sutan is the one guy that's got some experience down low to be able to take the pressure off the perimeter guys. But Sutan's been intimidated. He hasn't been strong with the ball when he was down low. One of three from the field, so not even a lot of shots. Out of bounds off of Michigan State, so the Spartans still struggling on offense. Raymar Morgan had eight points in the first half, but he turned it over four times. Gray with four points in the first half. Sutan with three so those two players Sutan and Gray with a combined two field goals and it's the harassment of the, the pressure Maryland exerts even in the half court they get up in your face they're looking for deflections and that intimidates guys and also fatigues them mentally as I mentioned before and a Beckway with four first half blocks Gist with a nice looking jumper from about 15 feet and Maryland has an 11 point lead 10 now for Gist back to back nights in double figures and the Terrapins have their largest lead and now that Gist has established himself as a jump shooter, Sutan has got to get, get up on him. Can't give him all that room. Neitzel straddling the three-point line, nails it, so that's a two. Will Neitzel step up again for Michigan State? He's got six points. A Beckway driving, and a foul called on Gray. That's only his first, second Michigan State team foul in the half. And that's that athleticism. Maryland working the post on both sides. Gist stepping out for short jumpers. Beckway with that front pivot making a quick move to the basket. Here's another opportunity. And a Beckway scores and he's fouled. Back to back fouls on Gray. Third team foul on Michigan State. Only the fourth point of the night for a Beckway. And this is just pure quickness athleticism and pretty good execution. You take a look. Screen and then just step to the ball. And Gray kind of almost did a 360, which you're not supposed to do on defense. He just turned around in a complete circle and was lost. 22 points for Beckway, and all those came in the first half of last night's game. Only four points since then, including uh, the contest uh, here tonight. But for Maryland, the fortunate thing is they don't need him right now. Yeah. You know, they've got other guys that are pretty hot. Gis down low and Strawberry obviously in transition. And are there enough offensive weapons for Michigan State to come back from 11 down as Maryland's Mike Jones commits a foul. That's his first and the first on Maryland. Jones doesn't have a point tonight. He's over four from the floor, but they haven't needed him to this point either. And really, DJ Strawberry's been the story for them and most of those points coming in transition. Neitzel off the bounce. Good feed to Sutan. Had trouble getting the handle, but eventually collected and scores. Well, it was fortunate that he actually did bobble so he wouldn't be called for a travel. Maryland coming off back-to-back -back 19 win seasons. Missed the NCAA tournament each of the last two years. Michigan State made the tournament a year ago, but lost to George Mason in the opening round. Shot clock at 11. Gist spinning on Sutan, and that's the fourth personal foul on Sutan. Well, it's the jump shots. The last two that Gist has made it really set up that play. Sutan recognized you got to get a little bit closer defensively, and that's what Gist wanted. Get him on the hip, little pump fake to develop the contact, and Sutan will probably take a seat on the bench. That's the 14 foul, and Gist will shoot two. Now that you've had a chance to digest the Maryland Terrapins, do they look better than you thought they would coming into the season line? 
Well, I knew that ultimately they would develop it. It was all about confidence, and right now their confidence is flowing. I think yesterday's game gave them an extraordinary boost, and now you see guys making moves, you see guys playing aggressively on both ends of the floor, because they've always had the talent. And that's why people conceive them as being underachievers, because in the last couple of years they've had the talent. They just never demonstrated it. Right now it seems like they're putting it all together. Of course, again, senior urgency, three senior leaders certainly doesn't hurt. And he thought chemistry was a, a big issue last year with some off the court issues as Neitzel cans a three. Big shot for Michigan State. They needed that. And Gary Williams told us yesterday that chemistry is terrific with this Maryland team, and we've seen that. And you wonder how far the momentum of last night's thrashing of St. John's will carry him. Might not carry him past tonight, but it might carry him all the way into. Uh, the ACC is a uh, guest misses and it's rebounded by Morgan. But still, if you're Carolina, which uh, got the bulk of the first place votes in the ACC poll, and Duke, Georgia Tech, some of the other good teams, BC and the ACC, you got to take notice of what Maryland's done here in New York. Well, as competitive as that conference is, they're always taking notes. But in the end, I think the expectations for Maryland have just risen. Now we wondered who would uh, be the guy to score for Michigan State. It's Drew Neitzel. He's got 11 points. The only returning starter for Tom Izzo from last year's team. Seven in the uh, second half for Neitzel. And Michigan State hasn't missed from the floor in the second half. Here's a Beckway. And Ebok blocked it. A Beckway a second time. Puts it home with the left hand. Six points now for Beckway to lead back to eight for Maryland. Five minutes gone by second half. Walton on the drive. Missed the shot, but he was fouled. It will go to the line. Maryland trying to win the championship in the Coaches versus Cancer Classic here in New York, leading by eight. Michigan battles number one Ohio State. Coverage begins Saturday at 2.30 Eastern. Get ready for college hoops. Reddick dishes it to the perimeter. Gets it. Baseline. Reddick fires. Buries it. 2K Sports College Hoops 2K7 features. Chant Creator. Team Unity. Advanced Ball Control, the number one college hoops franchise four years running. Coming soon for Xbox 360, Xbox, and PlayStation 2. Rated E for everyone. Technology has made your morning easier. Why not your shave? The Philips Norelco Smart Touch XL is designed to shave more with three shaving rings in each shaving head. And it stays on your neck, so even tricky hairs are cut. Simplicity is making every stroke count. new features for 2007. The most important parts of a Volvo XC90 are the parts we don't make. Lease a new 2007 Volvo XC90 3.2 front wheel drive for $359 a month for 24 months. Technology has made your morning easier. Why not your shave? The Philips Norelco Smart Touch XL is designed to shave more with three shaving rings in each shaving head. And it stays on your neck, so even tricky hairs are cut. Simplicity is making every stroke count. Maryland by eight in the title game of the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic, the first of many November tournament championship games. The CBA E Classic is coming up as well as the NIT season tip-off here. Just some of the teams featured in what should be a November to remember. Howie Invitational starts on Monday in that Las Vegas Invitational featuring Kansas and Florida. A week from Saturday, of course, the ACC Big Ten challenged some great matchups. We got an ACC Big Ten matchup right here. 
in Michigan State in Maryland. And here's what Feast Week presented by Lowe's looks like on the family of networks culminating in that Florida-Kansas matchup a week from tomorrow in Vegas. Well, aside from entertainment and all these potential NCAA tournament matchups, coaches use these November games as a barometer. They want to see where their team might be. They want to see who are the guys they can count on, and they learn something, and the good and great players measure up against their counterparts on the other team. So that's the fun of November basketball, and I've obviously, if I'm not doing the game, I'm going to be glued to the set like everybody else. Let's check in with Heather Cox. Well, you talk about all the great games in November. We've already seen several upsets, including Oral Roberts over Kansas, Michigan State last night over Texas. We talked to Gary Williams about his response to what he calls the upsets, and he said, you know what, there's so much parity. Upsets aren't surprising. The reason, there's no longer intimidation in the college game. All the hot players know each other. They play together in the offseason. They text message, and then the top names all disperse because they want to be stars. Everybody wants to play right away. So Lennon David begs the question, are the days of really the big time program dominance over I don't know you talk to Carolina talk to Duke <laughs> they'll tell you no at least right now but I think the parity point is well taken and I think that a lot of these kids because they know and play with each other on travel teams um, you know they know who the good ones are they also know who the hyped ones are and so it's no longer the name on the front of the jersey that really intimidates they just see a guy that they might have scored 20 on in AAU ball of course, a Winthrop hung with North Carolina the other night as a Beckley goes down hard after the block and a Maryland foul. It's going to go on Strawberry, his second. Third Maryland team foul. And Raymar Morgan, again, trying to establish an aggressive pace for Michigan State against the Maryland defense. You know, Maryland likes to gamble. They'll get up in your face. They'll force you to put it on the floor and challenge you to, to take it to the basket. And if you back away from that challenge, that's when you get the steals and the transition baskets on Maryland's part. You know, just to finish uh, Heather's point, you get George Mason, obviously, that went to the Final Four last year. Will there be another George Mason this year, or will there be two teams like George Mason that make a run to the Final Four? George Mason will be on our airwaves uh, tomorrow on ESPN2 against Wichita State. We're going to first uh, look at the post-Final Four run. And this should be a jump ball, and it is, and it will go to Michigan State, which is climbing its way back into the game, trailing now by five. Glenn, do you think there'll be a point soon in college basketball where we'll have as many mid-majors as majors in the Final Four? We're not there yet? No. <laughs> Bottom line is, I think, again, NCAA made a decision, obviously, to be more diverse. Yeah. You know, get great mid-major teams to play in the tournament as opposed to the mediocre teams from the power conferences. Last year was entertaining. I think it's a good thing. So intelligent, it knows precisely when to turn rear-wheel drive performance into all-wheel drive control. So intuitive, it's beyond machine. The all-new 306 horsepower G from Infinity. There's strong, and then there's army strong. It's more than physical strength. It is emotional strength. Not just strength in numbers, the strength of brothers. Not just the strength to get yourself over, the strength to get over yourself. There's nothing stronger than the U.S. Army, because there is nothing stronger than a U.S. Army soldier. There's strong, and then there's Army strong. Visit GoArmy.com slash strong. Welcome. Welcome to a brand new day. Welcome to a place where books rewrite themselves. Where you can drag and drop people wherever they want to go. Where maps are rewritten. And anyone can be famous. Where we're more powerful together than we ever could be apart. Welcome to the Human Network. Your neighborhood Radio Shack now has LCD HD TVs. We also have Dish HD, which gives you America's largest HD lineup. Now when you buy an LCD HD TV with Dish HD, you get $300 in total savings. But with so much HD programming, it could be tough pulling yourself away. 
Go to Radio Shack for LCD HD TVs, Dish HD, and the people that can make it all really simple. Only at Radio Shack. Back in New York City, where Maryland leads Michigan State by five. And don't forget tomorrow at 2.30 Eastern time, coverage begins for perhaps the most anticipated college football game in 70 years. Michigan and Ohio State, one versus two. California, USC, another good one at 8 Eastern. ESPN on ABC. It's only the second time in college football history, by the way, there's been a regular season game between two 10-0 teams. The last time, 1935, when you might recall, SMU, Craig James not on the team then, beat TCU in the battle for Dallas. Back in 1935, hard to believe we have not had a, another 10-0, 10-0 matchup since then, but we'll have it tomorrow for you. In the wake of uh, the death of Bo Schembechler at age 77, the Michigan legend. Morgan got to the loose ball after Neitzel had a shot blocked. And now Gravis Vasquez out of there with it for Maryland. Boy, Maryland's so active. We talked about them averaging eight blocks a game, so active in contesting. Mike Jones still can't get off the Schneid. Missed the three. He's 0 for 5 from the floor. Maryland allowing Michigan State to hang around. And here's the problem for Mike Jones. He continues to try to shoot that jumper, and he shoots it too deep. You want your shooting average to improve. Go get some easy baskets. Run the floor on the break. Offensive rebound. Neitzel got inside of Vasquez. He's had a terrific second half. He's got 13 for the game. Nine since intermission, and Michigan State is within a possession. Michigan State starting to make Maryland pay for the gambles. You know, they may block one or two to Turks will, but Michigan State very persistent. A 10-2 run by MSU. And Vasquez lost it, but Ebach touched it last, so Maryland will keep with 13 to shoot. You notice a little bounce in the step of the Michigan State defenders right now? They're starting to match the intensity on the defensive end that Maryland has demonstrated on their defensive end. You know, good old hard-nosed man-to-man defense. And you wouldn't expect anything less from both Tom Izzo and Gary Williams. Abekwe can't get it to drop, but he's fouled by Ebok. His third. That's the 16th foul on Michigan State. One more, and Maryland will be in the bonus. But this is a shooting foul nonetheless. Now, Lebecque had that big first half against St. John's last night with 22 points, tying a career high for a game. Only six points tonight. They might need him down the stretch. Jones has struggled. Strawberry has been pretty much shut down since he had a lot of transition points in the first half when he scored 14. Strawberry has not scored in the second half for Maryland. And a lot of that is attributed to the fact that Michigan State hasn't turned the ball over that much. You know, once that ball is loose and Maryland gets possession, D.J. Strubber, if he's not handling the break, he's one of the first guys down the floor. And some pressure by Maryland. Knights are able to break the pressure. And finds Namath for the jam. What a play by Neitzel. And Namath, that's what I'm talking about. Big body, strong hands, go hard. Vasquez went hard. And then a Maryland foul after the rebound. Fourth team foul by the Terrapins. And this is how you finish. You beat the break. Get an advantage situation. Namick had been timid earlier in this game, getting the ball deflected, losing it, but this time he made sure. And Abekwe commits the foul. That's three on him, so he's going to go to the bench. And Dave Neal, who has played limited minutes this season, will come into the game. Neal, a sophomore, averaging six points per game this year, but again, that's in limited duty. And Michigan State can get within one or tie it with a three. And Drew Neitzel has been the difference in the second half for Michigan State, scoring and dishing. Again, we talk about a guy with Final Four experience, NCAA tournament experience, a major score when he was in high school and was pressed into service as a playmaker at Michigan because of the great players they had. Now he's going back to his roots. Joseph can't hit the three. The tip won't go. Ebon kept it alive, and Will Bowers clears for Maryland. Here's Jones spotting up, throws the three! Huge, huge 
huge jumper for Mike Jones to keep the distance. His first point of the night. Maryland's lead back to six. Jones had 18 points last night in the win over St. John's. Here's Neitzel. He hit the game winner over Texas last night. Excellent ball movement. Joseph can hit the three, though. Bounced three times on the rim. And Joseph took it away from Vasquez. Neitzel's by himself beyond the arc. So is Joseph. This time he connects. This is where a young team grows. The extra passes. The battle on the boards. Guys are in this game. They're in it to win now. They're not in it just to stick around. And you're watching the Michigan State Spartans grow up against a very good Maryland Terrapin team. Bowers. Ebok rejects. Strawberry for three. Got it. His first points of the second half. We've had three straight threes. Two by Maryland. One by Michigan State. The offense on both sides has kicked it up a notch. And the title game of the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic. Neitzel looking for another three. It's off the mark. And out of there with it is Vasquez. Ahead to Strawberry. Neal finishes. I just got finished talking about the growth of Michigan State. Here's going to be the test. Maryland just continues and continues to apply pressure on you. Defensively gets out in transition. And if you're going to stay with them, you have to be resilient. Maryland with 15 fast break points to none for Michigan State. The Terps lead back to eight. Well, again, here's pretty good defense right there by Ebok. But again, in transition, DJ Strawberry stepping up. We talk about senior urgency. Vasquez with a nice pass right there. And the trust in Dave Neal, a sophomore, a little used last year in the game at a critical point in time. You talk about chemistry, that's what it's all about, the trust in your teammates, even though they may not be a headliner. Well, Daryl Strawberry, a longtime Met and former Yankee, in attendance tonight watching his son DJ. At one point, uh, Daryl owned this town when he was a Met back in the mid 80s. And his son uh, DJ could end up being the MVP of this tournament. He was the College Park Regional MVP in this championship. And in two games here at the Garden, he's got 36 points and he's 13 of 19 from the field. Well, I was just thinking how quickly the tide turns. Michigan State. Obviously creeping back, creeping back, battling, scratching and clawing. And again, you talk about their growth and maturity, which you can't deny them that. And then all of a sudden, Maryland just like lightning. Well, you talked about it earlier, a lot of talent. How would they bounce back after missing the tournament for the second straight year? Carry. Palming has uh, been called five or six times in the two games we've had tonight. A point of emphasis this year, again in college basketball. You've waited all year for endless shrimp, and now it's almost gone. Don't miss the only time of year to enjoy all the shrimp you can eat. Endless shrimp ends soon, only at Red Lobster. If you stink, it wouldn't matter if you were the last guy on Earth. New Red Zone Clear Gel. College football on ABC. Michigan battles Ohio State. Coverage begins Saturday at 2.30 Eastern. Then Saturday night football at 8. Cal takes on USC. The Beatles present an extraordinary all-new project. A musical legacy reborn. Love. 
78 minutes of seamless music spanning their entire career. Here comes the sun, I say. The Beatles, as you've never heard them before. Love, available everywhere November 21st. This is an actual reenactment. Mary had just picked up her kids and was heading home to make dinner. Just then, in the blink of an eye, nothing happened. Events like this occur countless times every day. And Progressive Direct is doing something about it. Giving real savings to these good drivers. In fact, good drivers who switched to Progressive saved hundreds right away. Tonight's game being broadcast on ESPN 2 HD, presented by Olivia. Maryland leading Michigan State 52-44, midway through the title game. Other 2K Sports College Hoops Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer. Palming, like last year, a point of emphasis this year in college basketball. We've seen it called several times tonight. Right, and take a look right here. Marquise Gray, watch his hand go right underneath the ball and kind of hesitate. Take a look at the ball right there. Hands underneath it. And then he get, takes a step and gets called for it. Guys, you know you weren't taught to dribble like that when you started playing this game. And right now, that kind of turnover in this point in the game is inexcusable. Here's an alley-oop of Beckway catching. Sutan blocked it. Dangerous for Sutan, considering he's got four fouls. But it was a clean block. You know, you just hate to see guys revert back to bad habits. You know, I blame it even on the high school level where they allow it. You've got to crack down early. So guys play the game fundamentally sound. Here's Neitzel has been the second half story for Michigan State. He's got nine since intermission, 13th Neitzel's of the gotta game. Be, he's got to be careful, too. He's turning the ball over. He just didn't get called for it. Neitzel, 4-3. Off the mark of Beckway with the rebound. And Gravis Vasquez, Maryland freshman point guard, will slow it down. Jones lost it. Neitzel takes it away. Two Terrapins giving chase. And Neitzel gets it to go. And Neitzel asking why not a foul. It was contact. Boy, you give him a lot of credit, though. Two shot blockers. Two athletic guys trailing him on that. Just trying to line him up to smack that ball away. Does a nice job of putting his body between the defenders and the ball. Two defenders, but two hands for Neitzel. He's ambidextrous. Shoots very well with both hands. Those are the first fast break points tonight for Michigan State. On the baseline, it was touched last by the Spartans, so it stays Maryland ball with 13 to shoot. A totally different second half for Neitzel. Took only four shots in the first. Already eight attempts. Midway through the second half, 11 points. The only returning starter for Tom Izzo's squad from last year's team. They leave Vasquez alone. Too strong with a three. Rebounded by freshman Raymar Morgan, who's back into the game. That was Neitzel last night that won it for Michigan State. A layup with 2.4 left to beat Texas to get here to the title game. He had 15 points in that contest. Here he finds Namick. Gray keeps it alive. And has it blocked from behind, and a jump ball is called. It will stay Michigan State basketball in the alternate possession. Will Bowers from behind ties up Namick at a timeout on the floor. Gary Williams going deep into his bench, and a lot of guys off the pine giving him quality minutes, including Neal and Bowers. Get ready for college hoops. Reddick dishes it to the perimeter. Gets it, baseline. Reddick fires. Buries it. 2K Sports College Hoops 2K7 features. Chant Creator. Team Unity. Advanced Ball Control, the number one college hoops franchise four years running. Coming soon for Xbox 360, Xbox, and PlayStation 2. Rated E for everyone. What's up playing with me, you old whippersnapper? No, Check ball. Check. Ball game. I got it, Wise. I got it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! I'll call you back. Uh oh Where you going? Got you. I'll be on you like white on rice. Like flies on shut your mouth. Oh, foul! 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 No foul. No foul. I said check, boy. It's, it's check. Let's go, man. Let's go, Wise. The sky hook. What about that? He don't want to play no defense. He too cute. Time out. Time out. Time out.
sports sedans have come to be regarded as purely machine. But when design functions as a display of human skill and craftsmanship, rather than simply mechanical precision, the machine can evoke emotion. It can shape how you experience the road. It can go beyond machine. The all-new G is here. And it's from Infinity. The 2K Sports College Hoops Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer, is brought to you by 2K Sports, creators of College Hoops 2K7, the number one rated college basketball video game four years running. And in part by Infinity, makers of the all new 306 horsepower G, designed beyond machine. Some of those folks probably wish they had an Infinity. Tough to get a cab on Friday night in New York City. Should we fear the turtle in 2006-2007? Maryland leading by six over Michigan State. Feast Week presented by Lowe's gets underway Monday with action in the EA Sports Maui Invitational at 9 Eastern. DePaul off to a slow start, but the Blue Demons have talent. Sammy Mejia and DePaul taking on number 22, Kentucky, followed by number six, UCLA, with Aaron Aflalo and Chaminade at 11 Eastern time. Here tonight, Maryland leading by six. Some opportunities, though, Len, it appeared to extend that lead and maybe put Michigan State away, but hasn't happened. Spartans won't go away, and again, that's like the illustration of the growth, as I mentioned before. Last night, Texas had at least a six-point lead at halftime and had reasonably significant leads in that second half only to allow Michigan State to come back. So, again, that, that kind of resiliency is something that you have to develop. You can't really teach it. And in two consecutive games, Michigan State just hanging around, hanging around, waiting for an opportunity. And we get a whistle and a Maryland, or make that a Michigan State foul. So now Maryland is in the bonus. We'll shoot one and one. Let's check in with Heather. Well, during the first half, Coach Williams said that their half-court offense was a little bit jerky. They wanted it to be smooth. Well, now they want to slow it down during that last timeout. He talked about being patient, setting up the half-court, not pushing the tempo, and trying to burn a little bit of clock here with the lead, guys. Well, Strawberry's on the bench. Ibekwe will go to the line shooting one and one as Gray commits his third personal. Well, actually, Strawberry gets then Jones on the bench right now, and obviously those are some of their top offensive players and pretty good defensive players as well. Gary wants to buy some time, give them some rest, so they can make that solid push down the stretch, maybe the last four or five minutes of this game. Maryland played in this championship back in 2001-2002 and ended up going on to win the national title. Did not win this tournament, though. That was last touched by the Terrapins, so Michigan State ball. Gary Williams wanted a foul, but didn't get the call. Talked about the resiliency that Michigan State demonstrated yesterday, but again, that was against the primarily freshman team. This is a team that's got a lot of experienced players, so it could be a different story. Maryland, very experienced with seniors and juniors, and guys aren't playing defense either. Great look by Walt to find Sutan, and Michigan State back within four. Sutan playing with four fouls, now has seven points, and that will get James Gist off the bench. And a kickball by Neitzel. Shot clock will stay at 25, and Gist will come in and replace Bowers. Well, it's a lot of that high screen movement that forces people to step up and try to help, allowing the big guys to sneak behind on that baseline. Hayes with the skip to Brown. Ten on the shot clock. Brown hit two threes in the first half off the mark there. Sutan with the board. Under seven to go in the second half. Michigan State can cut it to two or one with a three-point shot. Here's Morgan. Offensive foul on Raymar Morgan. 18 foul on Michigan State. And personal foul number two on Morgan. Well, again, quick move. It's, uh, again, another bang-bang play here. I guess because of the right shoulder that got into Parrish Brown's chest. You know, 
Morgan obviously trying to make a lot happen. Tom Izzo telling him to calm down, slow it down. You don't have to do it by yourself. Had a great night last night. The freshman with 18 points in that win over Texas. Bowers working on Sutan. Can't hit. And see, when you're playing deliberate basketball, Dave, you've got to rely on your post players to give you something. You know, then you can start playing inside out. Otherwise, you're just passing the ball east-west, when in reality, you want to go north-south, you want to inside out, force the defense to have to adjust and get you some easy buckets. Good hands. And Sutan scores and a foul. Sutan again playing with four fouls. They went to him. On the defensive end, Bowers unable to hit, and they went to him on the offensive end. Now they're waving off the basket, saying it was a common foul before the shot, so that's the 15 foul on Maryland. Well, judge for yourself right there. No continuation in college basketball. It's pretty close. Foul on Gist. That's only his first personal. Michigan State ball, down four. Under six to go now in the second half. Here's Naito with 15 to shoot. Sutan at two, spins out. And Joseph with a second offensive rebound of the half. Michigan State can use some clock of their own right now. Good decision. Got a second chance. Reset. Here's Neitzel, again off the pick, drills a three to pull the Spartans within one. Kid is unbelievable. They are just in the first half, you thought, okay, he might have been worn out. Comes back here in the second half and just lights Maryland up. And he's keeping the Spartans in the ball game. Determination. 14 second half points for Drew Neitzel, averaged only eight points per game a year ago. And again, off the high screen, creates something, gets it, and all he needs is a sliver of daylight. Get that opening right here. Off the screen, two big guys, Hayes at about 6'4", and Bowers at 7 feet, converging on him, and he finds just enough daylight to drop it down. Now, let's say this. You know, to Nitro's credit, he's really done a great job of bringing Michigan State back, but he's also not having to face D.J. Strawberry in that particular role in the last couple of minutes. Strawberry on the bench. Expect Gary Williams to bring him back and expect Strawberry to try to clamp down on Neitzel. Neitzel bulked up in the offseason, got stronger, added nine pounds, so he's up to a buck 80. Only returning starter from a Michigan State team that won 22 games last year, had three players go to the NBA. Neitzel's role changing this year from more of a setup man to more of a scorer, and he's relishing that role. Strawberry back in for Maryland, which is without a point in about the last four minutes. Off the timeout, they set up a play, and Jones drills a triple, answering Neitzel's three from the other end. And he was standing on the pro line. I don't think Mike Jones really cares where the line is. <laughs> he just wants to get his shot off when his number's called. Doesn't know or doesn't care. Neitzel, nice floater, and it rattles home. We talked about him being ambidextrous. That was with the offhand, allegedly the right hand. It looked like a totally off-balance shot, but he was totally under control. Career-high 20 points for Neitzel, 16 of those in the second half. Freshman Vasquez for three. Big shot by the freshman. Two key threes by the Terps. Their lead back to five. Knights will hit Sutan in the pick and roll. That one off of uh, a Maryland player's leg, so it will stay a Michigan State ball. A Beckway returns for the Terps, replacing Bowers, who gave Gary Williams good minutes. Raymar Morgan into the game, and Joseph will go to the bench for Tom Izzo's squad. Shot clock at 21 for Michigan State. The 2K Sports College Hoops Classic Championship game. Three of the last five years, team that played in this event went on to win the national title, including Florida last year, won this event, unranked coming in, obviously ended up winning the championship. Shot clock at seven. Neitzel against Strawberry, a matchup that we've seen a lot tonight. And Neitzel gets free. 
Off with the three, though, and Vasquez with a rebound. Strawberry in the front court. Pass broken up by Knights, but Gis is there and slams it through. Well, that was pure athleticism right there. Knights hustles back, deflects the pass, and Gis just made it look easy. That's 14 points now for James Gist. Timeout, Tom is up. Maryland answering Michigan State's run. Back up seven are the Terrapins. Michigan State with two timeouts remaining. Maryland also with two timeouts left. Well, I'll tell you what's happened, Dave. You saw the front line continually rotate. You know, you had Neal, you had Bowers, you had a Beckway, you had Gist. Gary Williams is rotating his big guys, recognizing that he's got more depth at that point and can wear down the big guys of Michigan State. And it's really starting to pay off as the Maryland big men are fresher. Get out on the break. Look at the long pass. Nice job by Vasquez. Knights are the only guy back. Sutan gets back a little bit too late. And again, it's the freshness of the big men of Maryland, the athletic guys who can get out and run and finish for the Terps. 17 fast break points for Maryland, only two for Michigan State. Maryland's in the bonus, 18 fouls in Michigan State. The Terrapins have a foul to give, only uh, five team fouls, two more, and then Michigan State will be in the bonus. Seven point lead for Maryland. And again, Neitzel's been the guy for Michigan State. Will someone else have to step up for the Spartans down the stretch here to score? And again, he's going to have to get some help inside, particularly. You know, Michigan State can match Maryland in numbers on the front line, but they don't match him in quality of play. Shot clock at 10. And look at Strawberry all over Neitzel. Neitzel can't receive. Morgan for two. And Sutan battling with Gist. Oh, great play by Sutan as he's falling down to save it. And again, he's playing with four personal fouls. Neitzel with 20 points to lead the way for Michigan State. 16 since halftime. Here he is with, again, Strawberry on him. Walton setting up. Nails a three to pull Michigan State within four. Dave, you, you called it. All the guys have to step up. I'm saying inside. I'm not sure Michigan State can beat Maryland with purely a perimeter game, but that certainly helps. And a foul on the Spartans, so Maryland will have free throws, a one-and-one -one situation. That's the ninth team foul, third personal on Morgan. A terrific title game here in New York City. Maryland up four on Michigan State. Michigan battles Ohio State. Coverage begins Saturday at 2.30 Eastern. Then Saturday night football at 8. Cal takes on USC. Standing in the second half. He's got 20 for the game. Michigan State within four. Lenny, let's go inside the play. Well, all throughout his career, DJ Strawberry has been Gary Williams' personal fire extinguisher. And here he is on the hot guy, Drew Neitzel. And watch the way he follows Neitzel off the screen so Neitzel can't turn and get the shot off. This is called shadowing. And he really took Neitzel out of the game at least out of that play and, and trying to take him out of the game, although Neitzel is recognizing that a tough defender like Strawberry, and you look at Neitzel in the second half, outscored Strawberry, but Strawberry's starting to light it up again. Neitzel recognized with a tough defender like Strawberry on him, his job is now to find open people, draw the good defenders and then find the open people. He did it with Walton on that last possession. That's our 2K Sports Star Watch. Will it be Neitzel? Will it be Strawberry that perhaps hits the big shot? in the final two minutes of this championship game of the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer. Mike Jones shooting a one and one. It's the front end. 
Only five team fouls on Gary Williams' squad. Now nine team fouls on Michigan State. Both teams with a pair of timeouts left. Only seven the night for Mike Jones didn't score in the first half. At 18 points last night. Knocks down both free throws there. The solace that Mike Jones has to take and that Maryland has to take is that, you know, they have the type of team where it's going to be a different guy every night. And that's what you want, that kind of balance. Here's Neitzel. Strawberry right there as he catches. Sutan. Shot clock inside of 10. Strawberry blanketing Neitzel. Walton got to let it fly. Way off. That did not hit the rim. So one second on the shot clock for Michigan State. That hit the backboard, but no rim, so you do not reset the shot clock. One on the timer. They're going to try to get Morgan in here. Well, you get your best athlete because all you can do right now is throw the ball up to the rim. Try to design a play. We can get an alley-oop from the inbounds. One fifty-two to go in the game. Maryland by six. And Vasquez and Morgan have to be separated. Well, actually, it was Vasquez. The officials told him, no, you can't get in that spot. He Humphrey Bogarted his way in, and the official kind of got a little impatient with him. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like your teenagers try to push you to the brink as a parent, you know? They'll see how far you'll let them go. Are you speaking from experience? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Vasquez and Morgan, both teenagers, are both freshmen. They get it into Namick, he got it away, and he can't hit it, but Morgan is there, and he can't stick it back in, but he's fouled. And they got a shot off, and then Morgan got the rebound. He'd like to have, a, have it back, though, strong enough to make that shot and draw the foul. Apparently, they had more than a little more than one second left because there's plenty of time to get that shot off. Got it squared up, and Morgan, a nice job of getting to the weak side of the board. Morgan two for two at the line, now three for three at the foul line. Jones committed the foul. That's a second 16 foul for Maryland. And what a semifinal and final this has been when you talk about the emergence of young players. You know, we talk a lot about the Texas kids, and Kevin Durant absolutely valid. But Raymar Morgan is really putting his stamp on future stardom. And in many ways, Gravis Vasquez, Eric Hayes. You know, there are guys right now that aren't afraid to play in, in the national spotlight. They don't give it up on 7th Avenue. Michigan State needs a stop. Minute and a half to go. Maryland by five. Strawberry. No whistle. Knights will get it. Ahead to Morgan. Vasquez will challenge. Morgan will score. And it's a three-point game. And a timeout is called. Michigan State will have one timeout remaining. Maryland with two and a minute 20 to go. Well, again, terrific defense right there, keeping Strawberry from even getting the ball up to the rim. And then the athleticism of Morgan, once again, out in front in a fast break. Look at this game track right here. Maryland's fast break points pretty much limited. I think they had, what, 15? Uh, maybe at the beginning of the second half. And uh, Michigan State's done a nice job there. And the reason why, offensive rebound. You, know, you can't fast break if you can't get the ball. And obviously Drew Neitzel really started to heat up in the second half. All right, that's our chemo coach game track. All right, what's uh, the key for Maryland? You've got the lead, and you've got a minute 20 to go. Obviously, don't turn it over, but what else? Well, Maryland's got a diversity of options in, in offense. You know, they've got guys out there. You can run them off screens to jumpers. You've got guys that you can post up. I would just continue to focus on inside out and try to move the ball a little bit, force the defense to have to change, force people to help, and then find the open man. That's what that's the success that they've had in their half court just about all evening. Again, one timeout remaining for Michigan State, two for Maryland. Just over a minute to play in the second half of the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic title game. Maryland by three over Michigan State. That's what I mentioned earlier. Maryland with their diversity and their efficiency on the blocks as well as guys who can shoot the perimeter shot. You got a lot of places you can go, but wow. Ebok with the strip on a Beckway. Michigan State can pull within one or tie it with a three. And again, they have one timeout remaining. So do you use it here 
Or not. No, absolutely not. You got to flow right now. Don't allow the other guy to set up his defense. Sutan on the draw, a little bit out of control. And a travel is called. I can tell you right now, Tommy Uzo is telling Drew, I didn't want you to give up the ball. I mean, Goran Sutan, pretty good player, but in this situation, I didn't see a travel. I did not see a travel. And you could see the reaction by Izzo when Neitzel gave it up the first time. It was before Sutan got the ball. He was upset with right. Neitzel getting rid of it. Both teams now with a timeout left. And a total of 35 turnovers in this game. It's been a little bit sloppy, but it's been very exciting as well. It'll be Maryland ball with a three-point lead. And Michigan State, do you foul right away, or do you let some time uh, go off the clock? 44.4 on the clock right now. Well, one possession ball game, if you play defense, you make a stop, you're going to get the last shot. So I'm not so sure I would foul. And, you know, Tom Izzo, you know, he spent some time out in Las Vegas. He can roll the dice a little bit. <laughs> and he's probably got some faith in his team defense and his team defensive concept. Speaking of Las Vegas, what a game we have a week from tomorrow. Florida and Kansas. And what a college football game we have tomorrow. ESPN and ABC, 3.30 Eastern, Ohio State, Michigan, 8 Eastern tomorrow night, Cal, USC. Tonight, Maryland in college basketball leading Michigan State by three. And they have the ball. We'll see if Michigan State fouls. Ooh. Oh, a high dribble Ooh. by Eric Hayes. But, but Hayes kept his hand on top of the ball, and that's the difference. He didn't turn it over. So no palming there. And Pierce Michigan State is going to let Maryland run a possession. Each team with a timeout left. Well, that's what I said. I mean, you got to you gotta have some pressure on the ball, though, and make them do something. About eight-second difference between the game and shot clocks. Here goes Strawberry to Vasquez with five left, and Gary Williams will call his final timeout. So four seconds to shoot, 12.8 on the game clock. Maryland is now out of timeouts. Michigan State with one remaining. You know, I'm not one to always second guess winners of national championships, but with four seconds left, a guy flowing into a jump shot, I'm not so sure now. With four seconds left now, you're going to inbound the ball. There's obviously some pressure that's going to be applied, and who knows what kind of shot you're going to get instead of a face-on jumper that young man Vasquez has already demonstrated and he can make. Second close game in two nights for Michigan State. Last night against Texas, Drew Neitzel gets a layup with 2.4 seconds left to win it for the Spartans. And again, it was the savviness of Neitzel. Was going to use the high screen. The defenders knew it. Now watch, tried to cheat a little bit, and Neitzel got him off balance and then drove down the middle of the court where there's no help, or at least help that comes too late. Will the ball be in Neitzel's hands again when it counts? A lot depends, obviously, on what Maryland does here with four seconds to shoot. If they get a basket, it's a two-possession game. Then you still got to, if you're Michigan State, you got to sprint down the floor, you got to score, and then you got to foul immediately. Are you thinking two or three uh, at that point, or does it matter for Michigan State if Maryland gets a basket? If Maryland gets a basket, you immediately go for a two. You get the easy basket, push it down the floor. Again, no timeouts remaining for Maryland. Michigan State has one. You put it in Mr. Strawberry's hands here with four seconds to shoot. Only three second-half points for him, 14 in the first half. And Maryland's going to be lucky to see the big guys down up top. You know they're going to step down and pin down. Whether they come back up top or go on the baseline depends. Strawberry gets it into Hayes. See, look where they are. Look where they are. Not a good shot, but he makes it. Oh, almost. Hit the backboard. And now an offensive foul is called. Tom Izzo is saying it should have been a shot clock violation. He's right. It did not hit the rim. That should have been a shot clock violation on Maryland. Tom Izzo calling for a timeout. With one second left, Hayes let it go. It hit the backboard, did not hit the rim. It should have been a shot clock violation. Michigan State ball out of bounds. Instead, the officials did not blow the whistle, and the possession continued. Shot was online, but you're right, did not hit the rim. And then Ebok gets it. 
Uh, I don't know. I mean, look, there was contact, no question about it. Ebok is clearing the ball so he can pass it. You know, such a borderline play. This is too early in the season to make borderline kinds of calls in games that both teams are fighting in a hotly contested manner. And you guys laughed at me, you know, off off air. People laughed at me and thought that Sutan's play wasn't a travel. But again, in a situation like that, you got to make those kinds of calls. You call what you see. Let's and see if this touched the rim here, Lenny. Going to get a better look from here. Doesn't look, I don't know, you I, can't tell. It's, it's still not close enough. Well, here's the other thing, too. Now, the way it caromed off, it didn't look like it touched any part of the rim, but it's hard to say. Now, Michigan State had possession, so maybe they elected not to blow the whistle. I, I, I can't tell. It was clearly a shot clock violation, but because Michigan State had possession, perhaps that's why they didn't blow the whistle and call it a violation. And Tom Izzo saying you should have, even though we had possession. We didn't have possession until the shot clock expired and the violation took place. That's what he's arguing. And I think that's a valid argument. Again, you've got to stay within the rules. People are calling what they see. And from a technical standpoint, you have got to make the calls that are out there on the floor. A lot of the judgment calls we may disagree with. I might have disagreed with the elbow call and the travel on the other side. But certainly in that situation, that's a technical call. And the officials could have consulted and I didn't see them consult with each other. Now the game's not over yet. There's 5.4 on the clock. Michigan State will try to foul Maryland immediately. It's still a one possession game. Hayes inbound to Strawberry, foul with 4.5 left. That's the 10th team foul on Michigan State. So DJ Strawberry will have two free throws and essentially all he has to do is make one. He's three for four at the line tonight. Well, if in fact Michigan State winds up losing, it's a tough way to go out. You do just about everything. You force a bad shot, only to have a turnover. He missed the first free throw. Michigan State is out of timeouts. If Strawberry misses, they got to get up the floor quickly and get a three. DJ's father, Daryl, anxiously watching his son, DJ. Missed the second one. Here's Neitzel. Three seconds left. Neitzel with one. And Neitzel's foul. So Maryland elects to foul Neitzel with .2 on the clock. And it's a one and one situation. And this is going to be tough here. He's got to make the first one. Missed the second one and somehow them tap it in for three. Well, there's your answer to the age-old argument. You know, you're up three, the other team has the final shot. Do you foul them and force them to hit two, especially with two tenths of a second? Gary Williams answered it. All right, so he makes the first one. He'll intentionally miss the second one. And with point two left, all you can do is tap it. You cannot catch it and shoot it. So we'll see after the miss if they go for the tap and try to tie the game. And it's tapped out of there by Ebok, and Maryland hangs on to win it 62-60 to at a great 2K Sports College Hoops Classic title game. We give Gary Williams an awful lot of credit right there for having his guys foul and not giving Knightsville a chance to tie the ball game. But again, a tough, tough way to go down for Michigan State. They hung in there. They could have been put away several times in this game, demonstrated real tenacity. And you give Maryland credit because, again, the urgency, the defense, they made the stops when they needed to, and they capitalized on the breaks that were given to them. And obviously, Tom Izzo will be looking at the tape to see, A, did that shot hit the rim? Well, let's take a look here at the missed free throw. They could only tap it in at that point with a .2 on the clock. Boy, Giss got his hand on it and slapped it away because Namick got a chance. Ebok had a hand in there as well, but again, going back to whether that shot by Hayes for three with one on the timer hit the rim, and then number two, did the violation occur before Michigan State had possession? Should the called the violation and had the Michigan State inbound the ball out of bounds or just let play continue? The officials elected for play to continue, and then the offensive foul by Michigan State, and Maryland ends up hanging on to win by two. 
Our 2K Sports Player of the Game, DJ Strawberry. 17 points. He's with Heather. DJ, the last time Maryland won this tournament, it went on to win the national championship. What type of confidence and momentum does this win give the team for the rest of the season? Um, it gives us a lot of confidence. You know, Michigan State, they're a tough team. They played us tough all the way down to the stretch, you know. And, you know, it gives us a lot of confidence going down the stretch. But, you know, we still got to get better. It's still early in the season. Still got to do a lot of things better. And we didn't have our best performance today. It seemed like a great one-on-one -on -one matchup with Drew Neitzel throughout the night. How did you ultimately win that battle? Um, he's tough, man. He comes off a lot of screens, you know. And they're big, man. They set great screens, and they're, they're, they're extremely big. So, you know, um, I, I just tried to battle all night with him. You know, he was getting, getting some open shots, and I was a little bit taller than him, so I was able to get a hand up sometimes. DJ, how much inspiration did you get playing here in New York, a city where your dad spent an awful lot of time on the baseball diamond? Oh, it... New York in the garden, you can't get better than this. Uh, it, it's great. It's a great feeling. You, get, you just go out there, you, you play off the emotion, off the crowd, and I went out there and just had fun. We'll certainly let you go enjoy it. Congratulations, Thank DJ. You. Dave? And Tom Izzo uh, still wondering what might have been, but uh, his team falls to Maryland 62 to 60. So Maryland is the champion of the 2K Sports College Hoops Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer. Here it is again. Watch Hayes. One second on the shot clock. Does it hit the rim? Should a violation have been called? Should they have let play continue? They elected it to continue, and an offensive foul was called to Michigan State. Well, you see, double zero had already occurred, obviously, and the ball did not hit the rim. That should have been a called violation. Yeah. Instead, it's not. An offensive foul is called, but Michigan State had a chance at the end to try to tap it in with .2 on the clock. And Maryland hangs on to win it 62-60. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, for Lynn Elmore, Heather Cox, and the rest of our crew. Dave Fash saying so long from Madison Square Garden in New York. Coming up next, quite frankly, with Stephen A. Smith, Maryland wins the championship.